here and Karen's cooking and I'm gonna be cooking breakfast this morning and I'm gonna make pancakes. I'm gonna use the deluxe cooking blender for just one part of these pancakes because I have some oatmeal here. This is the quick cooking. It's not the, long, uh, the, the full grain. You heard my lid make its little sound. You might know, oops, got a little spillage over the front, but that's okay. You might notice, got a little something different going on here because I got my tamper because I am gonna be grinding. And one of the things that when you're grinding, sometimes the, uh, whatever the food item is, wants to crawl up the sides. So, I have my deluxe cooking blender. It's got pre-programmed eight different cycles. And really, there's a ninth because you have a custom blend too. But we are going on the grind. It is set for two minutes and 20 seconds. I have seen, if you like ground, you to, to grind your coffee at home. I saw my tripod move a little bit. I wanna make sure hammer's nowhere near it. I hope we don't have any, I'm gonna do a little tiny adjust. Grind, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power button on. It's gonna be loud because it's grinding, but I'm gonna be using the tamper to push down the material. No way, this is gonna get chewed up like a scraper might. So there we go, it's gonna fire up. Look, my tamper's even moving all by itself a little bit, helping that flower. I'm probably not gonna go the full two minutes and 20. If this was the whole grain oatmeal, I maybe would. But this is halfway ground already and pulverized. And here I am with the tamper, keeping everything low and letting it go. And so I'm gonna just... Actually, if I wanted to pause it too, I could hit the... I could just take the lid off and I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna put the brakes on. We're getting a really good grind, but it's just the littlest, tiniest bit gritty. So I'm gonna put the lid on it and I'm gonna hit that go button again. We can see it's powdery on the fingers. Work that side down. warm too. Um, it's not a heated grind, but that friction that is caused. Now that's the difference between other what you hear of, I got to use those little air quotes, cooking blender, the pa um, Pampered Chef Deluxe Cooking Blender is, does actually cook. We have a little computer in here a little micro computer in here that works together to make our blender and it's changing speeds to help the grind. <clears throat> It is done, and I'm 
going to get my bowl out because I'm going to take one of my bowls and I'm going to put my measuring cup back inside the bowl. Take my lid off. Lift up my pressure my blender bowl. Now I want to talk a second about these blades. Uh, the blades are, some of them are serrated. There happens to actually be six different blades and then this other set that comes up at the top. And some of these are just, are, are not sharp. They pulverize and that's what helps cook. And that's the difference between our cooking blender and others on the market that say they're cooking blenders, but they're really not because of the fact that they don't heat up by an element, they heat up by friction. And our blender will go to 220 degrees. If you uh, ever thought about making jam, this is, oh, it's, oh, here it comes. This is the jam. Oh, isn't that awful? Now, I got my blender here. I got all of this oat flour already, and I thought, why am I not making a smoothie this morning? And guess what I'm about to do before I finish with my blender? I am going to finish with a smoothie. That will help, I think, clean out my blender a little bit. I got me a pear. I had washed my fruit already. Um, I bought a misfit vegetable box. So I got some apples. I got some little pears, some plums. I um, got zucchini, cucumbers. Got to make a cucumber. I got to get some some plain potato chips so I can make a cucumber dip for Bob. Mm. Uh, Bob and me. It's one of my mother's favorite recipes for a dip with cucumber. I'll share that with you later in the week. So I got my, I've got my um, apples in there. I've got some uh, pears in there and I'm gonna put some, I get a little milk. I got milk out for my pancakes, but I'm gonna put a little milk in there too for liquid. I got ice in there because I like a cold slushy. And I'm gonna show you something brand new. These are called Enrichables. Now, <clears throat> at the end of my pancakes, when I'm down to about three pancakes left, I'm gonna be adding a kale and fiber just to test it out. I haven't tested that out yet. But we have Enrichables that are not meal replacements. They're um, component replacements, let's say, nutrient additions to your food because how many of us know we don't get our five servings of fruits and vegetables and some of us either we are protein lacking or we know someone who's lacking and getting their full amount of protein for the day and we know that protein is our gasoline our fuel so I'm going to be adding the kale to the end because this is a serving it's two this is all this kale and, and um this kale and fiber is chicory root fiber two ingredients chicory root fiber kale that's it and um this is pea protein just peas that's it nothing else just Peas. and it's got 10 grams of protein in this little packet and this has two cups of kale eight grams of fiber to boost our nutrition so I'm not putting any protein powder in my drink sometimes I do and this morning I'm gonna go ahead and cut open my pea protein and it actually is from yellow peas, so my pea product is yellow, so it's not gonna be any funny color, and maybe you've got kids that are a little funny about what they eat, and they don't want funny colors in their food. 
And now I'm going to turn our deluxe cooking blender. Gotta get to my smoothie. It's set on one minute. One minute, we're gonna have a smoothie. I'm gonna power this up. my fruit fiber that had the skin did take the scent oh looky there now did I have any way of knowing that was gonna fill just that cup I certainly did not but there is my beautiful breakfast smoothie I will be using the clean cycle yes this mix the deluxe cooking blender it is so deluxe it cleans itself in a smoothie, I really do. And I used to only put some ice in there. It's cool, but there's, it just, it blended that ice, gone. You really have to have a lot of ice in it. Mm, that is good, and I'm gonna set that right there. Oh, and I'm gonna take my deluxe cooking blender off of table and now we are going to enjoy some pancakes this morning and this is I'll put up a little video I made with me and my little great nephew Owen and he was two and a half we did um, we, we used our pancake shaker bottle um, this summer I kept I babysat him one one weekend and he and I had pancakes that he sat at his little table and helped make. And what I think is so wonderful about this pancake shaker is that the recipe is printed right on the bottle and no having to look through your papers to find where is that recipe. So we're gonna use the 12 pancake today because my plan is to take some of these pancakes and I am going to spread them out and freeze them for later eating to put in the toaster. And I should have shown you the agitator that's in there. So I'm gonna pull it out. Many of you know if you have one of those shaking bottles that they have this little agitator in it. Well, you keep the agitator in the bottle to help, um, it, it's a displacement, and there it goes back into the bottle. Now, what I think is also so awesome, I mean, I mean, come on, it's got the recipe on it. Where's my tablespoon? Is it a teaspoon? Is it a tablespoon? It's the lid. It's the cap. That is the measure. And now we're going to add, it says to add our flour up to this level. So I am our ground flour this morning from our oatmeal is going to be spooned in little Owen. We did six. We did not do 12. It was just the two of us. And uh, he scooped out every spoon of flour. He had the best time doing that. And so 
it's all about making memories with those kids and getting them fed. And a lot of times, if you have a picky eater, if they help make the food, then that's all the better. And I'm gonna put a little bit, it says it's got two little pinchies, which don't you imagine a little child with those two little pinchies, how much fun that was. So I got me some extra oatmeal flour I'll be able to use later. Now I look on my container and I did the pinch of salt. Now it's got a box. It's got the drawing of the baking powder. It's a little drawing. Sorry about that. And I'm going to put, it says two spoons, two scoops of that. And then what I love is it's got the sugar and their little sugar cubes. Now I had not seen a sugar cube in four ever but it shows that i need three scoops so i've got my sugar canister off camera but i'm putting my three scoops of sugar in there and then it's got drawn on there two eggs i've already cracked my eggs and hey i did crack it too um and it has some of the oatmeal that splashed so there it is, all stacked up. And now we're gonna get just the tiniest bit of exercise because we are going to put the cap on. Don't forget this part or you will have quite the mess. And I like to actually hold my hand over the top because I really don't want any messes. And I see on the bottom, I don't have any flour. So one thousand one, two, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine, ten. So then we're going to take and release, put some bear back in there. Some people complained it popped off. I don't know if they're, what they were working with, if it was hot or cold. One, two, three, four. Where you can count with your children. You can watch countdown. Should be about ten seconds that you shake it. And oh my goodness, I haven't even heated up my pan. And we do know that when we make pancakes, it does appear there's always that sacrificial pancake. Oh, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. So, but I do always seem to have a sacrifice. So I'm gonna just mix it up a little bit more. This is the fish spatula. But, I don't cook a lot of fish. I'm not a good fish cooker. Sorry, I'm just not. And so therefore, I won't do it. This is my olive oil. And, uh, but I love this spatula. It is super thin. It is very flexible and it works great for pancakes because you can get in around them and scoot you around them. Now remember, I'm not forgetting, I have my kale right here. Since I'm doing it as a serving, I'm wanting to wait till I'm down to about the last two pancakes to make, and then I'm going to, um, to use it. Now, my oil is heating up. Here's a little tip, a little trick. <clears throat> Here is my, it's a bamboo spoon. Um, so, what you can come in and do is you put the end of the wooden spoon, the bamboo spoon, and you see if there's any sizzle. All uh, natural products like this keep some degree of water in them. And so what you're going to see, it's not the wood or the bamboo that's boiling or frying, sizzling. It is that little bit of water that is still in that um, spoon. I'm getting a teeny tiny bit of sizzle now. And I'm going to put one of my spoons, my spoon straw. This is a new, one of the new products that came out. The half the straws I carry in my purse, um, the, the metal straws to take with you to restaurants. And this is one of the spoon straws. I tell you, if you like a milkshake, this is like those fat straws that let you get that um, milkshake up in there. So here we're gonna do it again. We're gonna test again, because I can see my um, oil is starting to get a little thready. 
and I can see some bubbles sizzling around the edge of my bamboo spoon and I know this is heated up and I am hoping 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 and I'm gonna shake it up a little bit because sometimes it does like to settle at the bottom and I want to avoid that so I'm gonna take my spoon off and I'm gonna just pour right in the center this is an induction burner that I have I'm in the market to buy a little electric it just does my stove the way my kitchen is set up is not conducive to filming and at my stove so I have this but I'm thinking about getting a little electric burner because this induction heats up very uh, hot in the center and then I wind up with not a lot of hot heat at the sides mm. pancake looks good I'm gonna move some of my oil and the other thing my induction does is tends to dome the pan a little bit. So I'm using a cast iron that has a lip around it. Ooh, we doesn't look too sacrificial. Look at that. When I lift the pan, it does a little, um, the that's the one nice thing about the induction. If you take the pan off, the burner does go off. So I got me a nice, it is, put enough olive oil in there that it's almost like a fried cake, like those, um, southern fried cakes little side note today oh my gosh if you're a Justin Bieber fan he's getting married oh, well he's already married I heard on the news CBS morning news but he is they're having their ceremony down in Bluffton which is Hilton Head area and uh, hmm I don't know. <laughs> Rented out the entire hotel or resort. And let me tell you, it is hot in, Col in South Carolina today. Columbia, we're going to get in the 90s today. And then you see out west, people have snow already. It is nice, this pan. I, I've got it set at 390 degrees and that one's really plumping up um the shaker does if you have a favorite buttermilk pancake recipe the pancake bottle um the shaker bottle does not really work very good with the buttermilk i will tell you that from experience because of the fact that it's so thick and there we go another pancake Oil across the pan. Look at there, how it just pours out so nice. Um, don't have to buy any, you know, all these shakers of pancakes uh, that they sell in the grocery store. A lot of waste. This you're going to put in the dishwasher. It is 100% dishwasher safe. Uh, and uh, it just doesn't take that many ingredients, really to stir up some pancakes. It tends to be you always have some baking powder in the house. And um, look, made my own flour. <laughs> and we know it's all natural. It didn't have any um, unbleached. So it's all good. I think what I'll do, I'm going to make one more pancake. Now this is the 12, but I'm making a little heartier size of pancake. And I'm wondering, because it's oatmeal flour, it might be a little thicker too. But I'm going to tell you what, these smell good. And it's not the first time making these oatmeal pancakes. Um, I just don't know if they're just... If it's the oatmeal or what that makes them so, it really did make them really tasty. They were very tasty. Move my oil around. Don't want to have any sticking. Looks like a little bit of, I think that's baking powder. We're going to take that out because I don't know if you've ever gotten a big old dose of baking powder or baking soda in something. Wow, it is just horrible. So now that I've got four over there and looks like I'm getting 
I'm not close to my bottom, but I'm getting a little nervous enough that I say I'm going to pour my kale in. And I'm going to come up close so you can see this. It is definitely green. I got my ceiling fan on, so if you're wondering what that blowing is, it's the ceiling fan. It is definitely green. That might be fun with your kids. Oops. A lot of bubbles over there. It's time to turn. so I can look inside there. I might give it a little scrape down. Just because I, I don't want to have any left. I don't want to lose any nutrients. Get this pancake out of there. Here we go. <laughs> Instead of green eggs and ham, we've got green pancakes. Now there you go, green pancakes and ham. Oh, wouldn't that be something on St. Patty's Day, this beautiful green pancake. I apologize right now, I think I'm gonna have a sneeze in a minute. Maybe I can keep that from going. Former co-worker Peggy Long told me, stare at a light, stare at a light, stare at a light. It's supposed to help you stop that sneezing. Now I got my bubbles going. Look at that green pancake. Is that something? See how this is this is not a delight. This turner. Oh, just it's the little things. It's those little things in the kitchen. Some of you are saying, she's weird. <laughs> oh. Now it's different, but it's kind of pretty. I'm thinking with my uh, a pat of yellow butter on that, and I promise I got this buttermilk, um, a microwavable, I gotta look that up for you, microwavable um, syrup that you make yourself with butter, buttermilk, and some sugar, and, um, some flavorings like maple flavoring look at that look at that a green shrek pancake let me get some oil don't want to lose my don't want to lose my mojo on being able to flip my pancake isn't that lovely i do recommend if you do like a buttermilk pancake that's on the thicker side by all means, the um, scoops that we have work wonderful for that. I mean, each one of my pancakes, being that I'm pouring it out of here, just keep turning out prettier and prettier, just as round as can be the first one. And um, the same can be achieved with a scooper. I do like, the one thing I like about the induction is the minute you, if you, you come on that temperature you really like, it stays. It keeps that heat. But the induction does only work on metals that are magnetic. Any other kind of pan, if, it's not, if a magnet doesn't stick to it, it is not going to activate the cooking surface of at least this induction burner it's not going to. I just think these, now, yes, the all important taste test has not occurred yet. Okay, now this is when you get down to the bottom. You can kind of, you shake it as you pour it because that agitator is holding in some of the pancake mix and I find that if I shake it like that it releases it. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and tear that in half 
how beautiful that is. I do get a more earthy taste from it. I can, I can't say that I can taste the kale because you know kale, mm, oh, mm, it's different from cabbage. It's not lettuce. I mean, to me, that tastes more like the whole grain things that you taste um, sometimes. Um, especially, frankly, if you've ever had a buckwheat pancake. That's kind of what that tastes like with the um, kale in it. I'm going to go ahead and pull off a little bit of one of Bob's pancakes. Mm. Not a whole bit of, um, not, not a whole amount of difference. And if you're going to cover it <laughs> in syrup anyway, or at least if you're going to use, you know, real syrup, 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 we should put that on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, I'll have to have that as one of our questions, our, our little mean questions. Is it syrup or is it syrup? I think sometimes it depends on how I feel. Is it pecan or pecan? Depends on what I'm making. If I'm eating ice cream, it's butter pecan. If I'm making a pie, it's pecan pie. Come on, people. Pecan, well, I guess some people say pecan pie. So annoying. An unwanted phone call just came through right as I'm talking to you. Don't you hate it? I gotta put that thing on airplane mode. I am going to take that open, wipe my hand off, mm. tell you, that does cook up good. Okay, so I had four of the kale and four of the plain. It did say 12, but I'm thinking that my oatmeal flour is just that much richer and makes the batter that much thicker because I will tell you when you when I make my flour my white flour my regular wheat flour pancakes the batter is thin and kind of will run run across the pan sometimes and um, I think that's one of the differences and I'm going to turn that off because we're down to that last little bit. And um, so there you go. Used the deluxe cooking blender, uh, made oatmeal flour. I then made a smoothie on top of that to kind of clean it out. And I told you it's got a cleaning process. I don't have that set up right now. But what I'm gonna do is put, I'm gonna rinse it off a little bit in the sink. I'm gonna put two and a half cups of water in it couple of drips of soap in it, put the lid on it, and I'm going to turn it to the clean, heat it, clean, and it is going to sit there and heat up to 140 degrees, and I'm going to be in the other room. It is going to be blending and blending, uh, just changing speeds and super duper blending, and then it, we are going to have... Um, a clean blender when it's done. I like to pour, and, and I got 140 degree water. I can pour down the sink. If you have a disposal, sink disposal, you know, just think of that, all that nice hot water cleaning through there. So what did we do today? I've got the um, smoothie that I have enriched with pea protein. So I'm getting a serving of protein. I had a little bit of milk in it, but I'm getting 10 grams of protein from this little pea package and no taste. And I know there's not one chemical in there. I'm getting from, with my pancakes, I'm gonna bring this over here. With my pancakes, I'm getting, with my cool green pancakes, my Shrek cakes, I should call them. I gotta come up with a name for that. I'm getting a full serving of 
vegetables. I'm getting, let's see, eight grams of dietary fiber in my um, vegetables. I'm getting calcium, potassium, all these good things. And, uh, you know, I got, they were small apples, small pear, but already part of my nutrients through the day. So, um, syrup or syrup? Hmm. Let me know. So, good morning. Hope your day starts off the right way with a good breakfast.